We have the new the new season has dropped and it's been a hell of a grind. Uh, we're in about mid diamond now, me and my team. But I figured that we're gonna go back and we're gonna be looking at the journey. I'm of course gonna go all the way to Predator. Uh, Master or Predator is the goal, preferably High Predator. And I figured that we're gonna be just watching the VODs together. I'm gonna kind of VOD review and explain what happened so you guys can kind of learn as we go on. Uh, this is the first of this type of video that we do live. So if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to smash the like button, let me know in the comments and all that stuff. And of course, chat in the bottom left here, you can say hi if anyone is <laughs> not lurking. Well, let's just dive into it. C notes, we dropped on C note a lot lately. Oh, we used oh, to drop on it be before. Chris was a good play to play in uh, place to play in comp. So a good place yeah. to drop in comp or used to be. It wasn't yeah, really contested, had good rotations, had a car. We still have the car, but it has moved. Okay. Um, this very decent loot, and with the addition of the IMC armories and the new prowlers, is even more viable. So we're uncontested here. What we're doing is we're kind of dropping and trying to get as much loot as possible and soak up what they're doing. This guy landed alone, so we wanted to flush him out early and contest him. And do super spicy shots to end this up, or rather start this off. Oh my god. So now there's a 2v3 already. I'm trying to grab some loot on the way, get a 2x for my 30 30. Above. One is in front of me now. And then we're just gonna move forward. I just have to basically loot up a little bit so I can go help my teammates. It's gonna be a 2v3. Yes, they're waiting for us, but we have the man advantage, so it should be a cleanup. As long as we don't throw. Uh, you might notice I'm playing Newcastle. I basically play Newcastle every day in the last week. I don't know what you guys think of Newcastle versus Gibraltar. Um, but I personally prefer Newcastle over Gibraltar, I feel like it's better. TGB and Lepe, they say Jibby's better, so I'm trying him out today. We haven't had no chance to really give him a try. But I feel like Newcastle has a lot of strength in his walls, which you will see later in the spot. And like, yeah, Jibby can bubble forward and has that, but I don't know, I feel like having perma walls and the rest and everything is more valuable. 164 of damage on a blue shield. 10 HP. And I'm just kind of looking for the armor. So this was a super clean fight. I don't think anyone dropped close to us. The nearest team was uh, Barometer. And now I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of looting up a little bit. So when is, so we're getting contested there. A random team just ran up from, I don't know where. I have a new castle ultimate, so I try to get the LOS and TGBs that can jump over to him and support him. I turn to kind of like shut off the angles. And then I help get the good shot on the Valk. I don't know where he came from. This must have been the uh, Barome uh, Barometer team. So now we're pushing up. We got two picks, or sorry, we got one pick. We have man advantage. We kind of healed up. We're waking up, uh, walking up. They could have rest. We have to wait for TGP Soul to go off. Actually, we finished him. I don't think he did that, but he got finished. That was Lepe. So now it's a two v three. They have high ground. We're kind of just moving up, controlling, uh, covering the angles together. Lepe is a little bit out of it, but I'm just taking a peek. He was waiting for it. And traded. So we wait. I call here. Wait for the Ash Q. And then from my bubble, or my wall, and we just walk up with the wall. He can't do anything. Now we have to move in here, and it's, it's a great timing from Lepe. He comes from behind and he shoots them. This is super awkward, by the way, with the Bangalore. I run off on my own. I shouldn't be doing this, especially as a Newcastle, but I just wanted to find him. Uh, or close out, because it was low as well. So we know there's a Bangalore. I found her right there. She didn't heal for some reason. We got the cleanup. So now we have... Uh, I have... Four, I need a lot of, uh, four and then two halves of a KP, so a five KP. Um, base, so I'm pretty close to the max amount of KP. Like, you don't have a hard cap in, in KP unranked anymore, but you do have a, a soft cap. So when you get past six points, it is not much of a point to push. Like, you don't want to push for kills for no reason. It's always good to get kills, but you don't want to push them and do nothing with it. Um... So that's a fun fact. If you're trying to like min max your ranked sessions, you want to maybe get free KP early, and then you want to get uh, free more somewhere down the line, or just get free KP and play for ending. Um, most KP will come towards the end of the game, so you don't really have to stress it. I, I still feel like if you play every game to win, you will come out uh, as good as possible, but you can probably you could probably like cheese it and try to get kill, kill points early. But it is risky going for kill points early because like if you get a kill this early, they're literally worth 1 RP versus uh, 25 when you win. So it's not really much of a point. It does scale. So the kills we got in early, uh, you will notice when the placement goes up that our kill, uh, my plus RP will change or the RP will change way more drastically than if we just had no kill points. Apex need looking for group within the game. 
Kind of, but you also have a uh, random. Maybe, I don't know, man. So anyways, you can use rotating game playing edge here. Um, people are very aggressive in the ranked lobbies, especially now. It's gonna get sweatier towards the end. It's a little bit like the old ranked in that sense. That is very a lot of um, aggression towards the start. And then the last 10 squads or so, it slows down for a sweaty end game. We're gonna see that. I'm still gonna explain the decision making here. So we're playing edge here, he's kind of chilling. I'm looking for like a way to use my new castle ult. Lepi got an amazing flank off and he runs the first horizon ult. And uh, TGB and I is chilling here, that means that we can kind of squeeze him. And I'm call, calling for the push here. There it is. So then we start moving in, I don't want to run up and be exposed. So as soon as he called, I knew that he would cover me so I can move upwards. And I can beaming thanks to the DT on my R99. I could have uh, probably queued here, but I feel like the queue kind of slows you down a lot. Uh, that's Newcastle. That's one bad thing. Like yeah, it allows you to run up. Uh, it allows you to run up, but it's like it slows you down. Like I said, and you kind of like you can get punished. They can break your bubble uh, with like 400 damage focus fire. So you gotta be careful. Is inside for now? I kind of erased it a little yeah, bit. It's really kinda, quiet, isn't it? I don't know. Let me know if the volumes are bad. You want to take height? No, no. 45. Fade it. You don't like the conversation on the left? Yeah, I wanted to give people a chance to... Uh... Ranked lessons nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're porting up here. Rafe took the portal. I was just took it because he was cracked. Easy beams. And there was another squad, we didn't notice that. So now we're in a pretty crappy situation, but we managed to run back. I'm using my ultimate, jump on Lepe. Turn, well, again, super important. I do lock TGB out with that, but I have a time to reset here and just kind of Phoenix up. Did you get him? And yeah, I got him. So we're still pretty good here. Um, the other team might want to push, but we have to... Ooh. Yeah, they got a lot of damage on TGB to probably want to push here. Uh, Lepe calls to take the top, which I kind of climb up. But I failed. I tried to climb up. <laughs> uh, now we decided we, we don't really have zone, we don't want to get locked out. Because when you have a prolonged fight over like 30 seconds a minute, you're gonna end up getting ate by the whole server. So we go, okay, we're leaving. So we start walking back towards the zone. Uh, they also Valk ult, which means that they could fly and land here in front of us and just cut us off. And then we're, we're the ones, we're the suckers. Uh, so we just decided we have to run forward, just send it so they can't get here. I'm going to have some poke here, but in all honesty, we can just keep running. They're just flying to barometer anyway, so we still have a lot of... Uh, we still have a lot of space to work with. So we're just going to play edge here. There's not really much we're doing. Just slowly working our way in on the edge. Slowly, like, making sure we have loot. Going back to the kills we previously got. Making sure that we are able to play the end game. We haven't really... Basically opened the map once so far. We're kind of just adjusting as we go. Don't really have like a solid game plan, but what we've noticed from ranked so far is that I feel like it's good to rotate early and take position, but at the same time, if you rotate early and take position, you kind of get screwed. Like, because uh, usually there's one team or two teams that take position and they will just poke you and maybe even try to like Papega push you. And then what happens is all the teams that are a little bit later, that were rotating in later, that have gotten kills or gotten loot. They just walk up and they wipe both of you. So taking an early position, uh, depending on the lobbies, depending on if it's a fast or slow lobby, it might end up being a throw. How many monitors you kind of just have to know whether it's going to be a sweaty or, or um, one for a, sorry, a slow or fast lobby. Chat, it's going to adjust on the fly, for, kind of. The chat one is my uh, you usually have, then, uh, based on different on, times of day, for, uh, whether you're expecting the lobbies to be one way or the other. Also, I was not aware that this was closed. Wait, what? <laughs> it's closed. Is it? Like, I still don't know. Has that always been close? Does anyone know in chat? I, I had no idea. So look at that zone. It's going to end right there. I even called it. It's going to end like right there. Um, we've seen this on a few times. So I've mentioned this in a few streams. But basically, when it comes to end zones, they rotate. There's like, I don't know how many zones. There's like 40 zones or something. Yeah. Give or take, maybe less. That kind of rotate. I think they reset once a week or once a season. I think it's like in the middle of the week they usually they used to reset. Um, so you have a new set of zones, and uh, you usually get to learn to predict, okay, so this week, 
this zone's gonna be here, and then like after Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever it is. Um, one zone that looks like it'll pull one way, we'll pull the other, and we'll continue doing that until the week is over. So that's a, like that's a reason it's a little bit difficult to read zones sometimes, but if you just keep that in mind, um, it'll make it a lot easier to continue reading zones. So, TGV did a good, did a good smoke here. Allowed us to just run up and take the low ground here. We have a Horizon Bangalore Newcastle. So it's a bit of a aggressive-ish comp with TGB on the Bangalore. We can kind of smoke for the rotations. We can smoke for the, uh, the push or defensively. I threw my Newcastle behind me there. They worked, obviously. I do this a lot. You can even throw a Newcastle on your team where they're holding. If they're holding like an angle for you. Or holding you from an angle. Or you can like throw it behind you when you're running away. So they shoot the, the wall instead of you. What I also did here is I put the thing next to windows. You can put it next to doorways as well, but I prefer putting it next to windows, especially yeah, in these types of buildings. Uh, because the weakness of this whole building is these two windows here. It makes it super open. It makes the angles a little bit more close. Obviously, it doesn't close it off completely, but it is, you know, it makes it a lot easier to uh, stay alive. It's pretty good. So we have a good position here. We assumed that it would end here. And that's what I was talking about before. In previous weeks, like the last few weeks, okay, anytime the zone was here, it ended right here. But with the new season, this zone always ends here. Uh, so us uh, us being here, we're like, okay, we have the ending and whatever. But uh, you, you'll see soon. I'm spoiling it. But I'm just calling that now. So you guys know. And we got a lockdown on space. You have a team on top of the Bulma. As uh, Lippy calls it. From uh, Dragon Ball. I have no idea how he saw him through the smoke like that. And then saw me through the smoke like that. Weird guy. Um, but yeah, there's a lot There's a lot of pressure. So we're kind of stuck in this room. Yeah, we can walk downstairs. We can probably walk like here. Um, but there's a team on, there's a team on top. There's a team here. And there's like a lot of teams here. There's seven squads alive in this endgame. So you have to be a little bit smart about it. Now nobody's shooting us here, so we found a little bit of space. Kind of trying to poke him down. So what I did there is I queued off the angle from the dude on the Bulma, so I could poke uh, the Wraith. Because he started shooting me, but it didn't work. And now you see the pull again. Still going to be fine for us. The high ground team has to move, but we're still fine. We can play edge if we want to. We can... This is also a TGB call, so we need to hold the team on top. So I thought I was Gigabrain here. And I learned something. Oh, Apparently, because they get one shot by Kravers. I still have no idea how he did that. Because I had a purple and a blue helmet. So but I guess I he know. got me like... I don't know. Yeah, I think it's 189 for the headshot. And I must have been 189 health or something. I don't know. I didn't have like full health. Nope. So we take Hagrid here, this is really good, he's looking for poke again. That is a game-winning position over there, kind of. But we'll see how everything evolves, because what's a good position in one game doesn't necessarily have to mean a win in this indie over game. So these guys fly in, and they now become an immediate threat to us. So we even got a crack, so Leopard makes a good call, we're gonna go for a wipe. And they're holding us. IQ, so I can bat. And I got a huge stick. I ult forward so I can help out. This does lock TGB off, but I think it was fine. Then yeah, I broke this with my H, and apparently it takes a while for it to go down properly, so I just held, ended up cleaning up. <laughs> but I mean, I'm supporting, so it's okay. Supporter duty on uh, Newcastle. He ran, I think. This Did is you know probably a better position. What? Did you know there was Arx around the door? No. Okay, get on top like here. I knew when I climbed up. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at So they're playing like in the back here, they're super exposed now, so this house ended up being better, unbeknownst to us. Uh, but there were two benefits from taking this. One is, you know, we got more kill points and loot. Uh, and two... <laughs> and two, the... We have control of this whole area now, so we can kind of just do whatever we want without fearing about getting shot in the back. Unless someone right it's in late. Wait, he's hiding in the Watson queue. I couldn't see what he was doing. So yeah, we overcommitted. They call us back. Very good. Um, but they're kind of free shots, so we should keep poking them. It's kind of chill. I think they died there. I think. Look at this. Save again. 
So they don't have any cover from us here. They have cover from the rest of the sauna, but not from us. So we kind of just having a field day dealing with them. So top four situation. One team has a duo. The rest are full. Uh, we, I don't think we were looking for which one was full and which was the duo, but still. Give me a second, give me a second. We're just focusing on control. Lepe walked up and took the bridge, which means we're basically set for the next zone. Uh, now we're just kind of hanging back a bit. There's no point in taking the angles too early. Because you wanna, like, TGP's already there. I'm just trying to help him a little bit. Because we have all this space. Just, like, we just gotta make sure that nobody takes the space from us. We could go take a position earlier, but if you go take the position earlier, you're giving up the space, and this team that we're shooting now, they can just walk up behind. Thank you, Carrier, for the five man. So we're getting this, like, holiness. This one team on right, and then we have one team inside. We can't obviously overcommit. But we want to play this, this, uh, truck. And keep in mind, I'm playing Newcastle. This is literally where Newcastle shines. His Q is good, his, his passive is good, but it's his ultimate that shines. You will see in a little bit. I'm pretty sure we had his ending before as well and did something like this, but a little bit different. So what I'm doing now is I'm setting up right here. All of a sudden, we have so much more cover to work with. I'm just kind of poking for free. I'm, well, whiffing for free. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's rough out here. You don't have to. You don't have to. Just play. Look at zone. We're I'm good. telling. I'm telling the boys. Just play on me. Just look at the zone. We, it's gonna end right underneath us. All we have to do is just play here. We have a new castle. We just put the walls up and play the walls. And and that's fine. We just that's that's like I said. That's the strength of Newcastle. You can constantly adjust the space you're working with, especially in late game where there's like no cover or anything. Well, I don't want to talk about the whiffs. I don't want to talk about the whiffs. That's better. One HP in the back. One HP on the one inside, one HP, one HP right inside. Oh, so we still don't need to commit, like we kind of just have to chill. Both of those teams have to collapse on each other. One might try to make a play for us, but I doubt it. They just have to collapse on each other. We have high ground for almost the entire ending. Uh, I don't think I'll have a new ultimate later on. Specifically, out in the open, right? But we just have to literally hold. And they have to we just fall out, they're gonna end up shooting each other, and we just... There. Our job is basically make sure to dish damage, apply the pressure to both teams, force them to push each other. Don't allow them to take space on us, don't allow them to take, uh, get picks, don't allow them any openings. I throw my portal on here. I'll go to you if needed. Nice. I've had a lot of endings where it's like super in the open, like even with water and stuff, you can just make so much happen with it. I'm sorry, using it aggressively too, it's super good for aggressive pushes. So now what happened is they started knocking each other because they started pushing each other to realize oh we can't push this team on the bridge we have to maybe play for a second right so they're starting to look for picks on each other some shots on each other and all we have to do is just enjoy the firing gallery the firing squad this head glitch is really good it's not really a head glitch but this cover is really good uh yeah, they have we're exposed from the top side but that's about it so I put it down another ultimate so that means that they can't really pick us from the top side. That ended up being super lucky because the ultimate that very moment. I mean, sorry, that was totally intentional, so they couldn't do the horizon ult on us. Uh, but that one is probably one of the game because all they had was the horizon ultimate to try to force us to, uh, you know, go off high ground. So I'm staying on high ground here still. My teammates, TGB and Lepid, dropped down, but I have a good angle. So playing a lot of damage. They are currently fighting because both teams had to panic. We know we just have to stay alive. I'm dropping down. It's a little bit risky, but screw it. Walk up, clean up. I think he died of zone. And that's it. See, that's all you have to do. Just constantly... Like, that that's the strength of, of, of Newcastle, really. Like, you can just constantly manipulate right, the space, the, especially in late game. Um, if, if you guys enjoyed this video, and we do a follow-up, I'll make sure to show some more examples of how Newcastle can just manipulate the space completely. Because it's incredibly valuable. Um, like, when you're in a bad position, you can make some awesome stuff happen. I had a game I was playing with, uh, Wrath, and I think it was Torje. And we were on the edge of zone, we were held out, and I just put an ultimate down. We had, like, a pixel to stand on, and that's all we needed to, to get second place and almost win. That was a good game. I should, I should review that next. I will probably review that next. Just let me know in the comments if you want to see that. That was a great example on how to play Newcastle. I ended up losing it, so you'll be able to learn from my mistakes, too. But it was a really good game. Um, anyways, and I was against Girl and Diff Q, that was the last squad, so they're pretty stacked teams in there as well. Okay, anyways, that was basically the first Road to Master video, I'll keep uploading these, or sorry, Road to Predator. I'll keep uploading these until we hit Predator, then maybe we'll do some stuff in Predator, if you guys enjoy these. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, maybe drop a comment if you enjoyed the video, all of this helps, you know, boost the video. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.